1998, there were three things that happened to me personally that made me kind of switch gears. I, I had been doing this for a while and never thought I was going to do this as a profession, but in 1998, I had a former student of mine when I was working in my residence hall named Larry. Um, I knew something was up with Larry in the residence hall because he was hanging around with the girls a lot and trying on their clothes. And I thought, hmm, something's up here. You know, and I thought, well, you know, maybe he's kind of trying to figure himself out. Um, I don't know if he's bisexual or maybe he's transgendered or I, I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening. But being a gay man, I kind of clued into that. And I kind of saw him come out of his shell. I was the token gay guy on campus, so everybody knew. And so he came up to me eventually, and he said, I want to let you know that I'm gay. And I kind of did my fun little thing, like, well, that's kind of a news flash, Larry, but um, really. He goes, well, I'm here for your support, anything that you need. There was no gay straight alliance on campus, nothing for him to reach out to. And I want to let you know, um, from what I understand, you have two groups here on campus. That's a rarity. And I usually find that people find their sense of community. If you're a gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, you find your first sense of community when you go to a college. You find like-minded people, and it's great. Like all of you that are involved in a sport and you have your teams, you find like-minded people that you can share your qualities about, what you're gonna work on, your game, things like that. Same goes for the LGBT community because they find their sense of community, like all of you do as well. Larry didn't have that sense of community, and two weeks later, there was gonna be an off-campus party, which he was gonna come out to everybody at the party, and I said to be very careful doing that. You're in northern Michigan, very conservative area, um, not the most accepting, and so it was a Friday night, February, very cold in northern Michigan. I don't know how it gets here, but we get a lot of snow, and it was probably about 20 degrees that outside that night. Larry goes to the party, I get a phone call from the local video store because you know when you're in a small town, everybody knows you, a place where everybody knows your name. Call me up and say, Greg, we think we have one of your students outside on a snowbank here. And I go, well, why do you think it's one of my students? Well, they pulled his ID out, says he's one of the dormies, dorm students. Um, and I go, what's his name? His name is Larry. And I said, is he okay? Well, he doesn't have a coat on, but someone threw him on a snowbank outside of our video store and we found him. We're calling the ambulance. They're coming on their way to pick him up. We thought we would call you. And I said, you called the right person. <coughs> I get in my car, go down to the video store about a mile away. He had already been taken to the hospital. And you have to understand, what had happened is he was at the party, he came out, and two individuals a uh, boyfriend and a girlfriend thought it'd be funny if they got him really intoxicated and then they just tossed him out of their car on top of a snowbank and left him there. February in northern Michigan, 20 degrees outside, no coat on. I go down to the hospital. I asked for where he's at. He had been passed out. He was snoring. Of course, he's really drunk. And they said, well, Mr. Baird, I need to let you know that there are some things written on his face and on his hands that you're going to be a little shocking. That kind of sunk my heart all the way down to the pit of my stomach. So I went to the room, and I noticed that in permanent marker, somebody had wrote fag on one cheek and bitch boy on the other. And then on his hands, they had drawn like long fingernails to make him look like a woman because uh, the old stereotype is, you know, all gay men are squishy and they all act like women. Untrue. But that was the stereotype that was labeled upon him that evening and thrown out like a piece of trash. That was really disheartening for me. I ended up picking him up later that evening, or later, I should say early in the morning, and took him back and he was trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and he finally did after a few days but he did not press charges with anybody because he was not out at home. He was not out in the community and he was in fear of if he came out and told his parents what had happened, he would lose all funding for his college, he'd be kicked out of the dorm because he wouldn't have money to go anywhere and he would lose his entire college graduation or college education because you know why? He was afraid to tell somebody who he was. 
very sad. That really hit home for me. I wanted to tell you a little bit. Um, I came out to my family in 1991, not too long ago, and um, my brother, I didn't know my brother was gay until 95, growing up or anything. And my brother is in Florida, and uh, we're not the closest uh, because of a lot of family issues that have gone on in our life. And I think, again, had my family been more accepting and more open, uh, a little bit more loving of a family, things would have been a lot different. But in 95, my brother, uh, my brother called me up and he says, Greg, why don't you book, you book your ticket to come down and see me at Christmas time and we'll hang out. I'm like, great. And he goes, um, and then I just want to let you know that um, I lead a very personal, real private life, so when you come down here, I'll tell you all about it. I was like, hmm. So what do you mean about a private life? Why don't you just tell me right now? My brother so, is so reserved and so quiet, and I heard him just struggling, and he goes, and I had been out for a while, by the way, and he goes, um, I'm one too. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole time I'm thinking like, what in the hell are the chances of having two sons adopted and they're both gay? So I didn't know what to say. So I'm thinking like, and he was really struggling, so I thought, all right, I usually use humor with my brother anyway, so this is what I said. I said to my brother, I go, oh my God, I don't have a brother, I have a sister. Because <laughs> some gay men go like, hey sister, what's up? Little lingo here for all you straight guys out there and girls, they go like, hey sister, what's up? <laughs> so I thought it would be kind of funny, hoping he would get it, and he busted out laughing. He thought that was the funniest thing I could ever say. In 2004, he came out to my mother. Now, I have to tell you, I came out to my mother in 91, and it wasn't really good. Um, it wasn't received very well. My parents have made, uh, my dad's been good the last few years, but my mother has made no investment in my brother's life or my life whatsoever. And I'm going to share this bit of information with you, because I'm going to tell you how this kind of language and this kind of information can literally damage somebody for the rest of your life. My brother called me in 2004. I moved to Chicago in 2003. He goes, hey Greg, I just want to let you know I came out to mom. I was shocked because I never thought he would. And I went, I, I said, well, congratulations. That's awesome. I go, what did she say? This is what my mother said. My brother's name was Doug, or Douglas. She said, well, Douglas, at least you didn't come out of my womb. Destroyed my brother. They no longer talk. He has found his biological mother, thank goodness, so um, he has a great relationship with her. Mine are both deceased. Um, I'm fine. I'm not, you're not going to find me on a Lifetime movie or anything that I'm upset about it. Um, I, I know my information. It's good. Um, but I worry what parents are doing out there to our children that are trying to be honest and just living their lives the way they should be living. Our conservative political rhetoric does not help our LGBT youth at all. And this year it's been terrible. And I will tell you, it's, it's helped escalate a lot of bullying in schools because when this stuff goes on the internet and they're saying, well, you know, we're going to get rid of gay marriage in Massachusetts. Um, gay people are, are less than, than normal. Um, and you hear all these different things that are going across on news stories. I will tell you, children pick up on all that stuff. So if they come home, the news is in the background, they may hear it from their parents, they'll hear it on the TV, they read it on Yahoo or on Google. And the bullies, you're just throwing another log on the fire because if they're getting that, they're like, well, you know what? This is kind of telling me that gay people, LGBT people, are second-class citizens, so it's okay for me to do what I'm doing. We need to change that. I ask all of you, whatever your background is or whatever your beliefs in, educate yourself. As I tell our gay people, tell your stories, because you know what? Our history for the LGBT community is not going to happen by going to a classroom rarely. It, it happens by us sharing our stories and talking about different events like Matthew, like talking about Stonewall, uh, Harvey Milk, things like that. We need to share our stories and keep those things alive because it's important 
as we get older and, and understanding that. And also know that the elder LGBT community were once activists as well. Gay or straight, we have a really bad situation in the United States on how we treat our older generation. If it's not new and improved, we're going to get rid of it. Well, you know what? Sit down and talk with, it doesn't matter if it's gay or straight, an older person, find out their life and what they're about. The elder LGBT community is a wealth of information because they've been there. they fought for a lot of things that we can have now. And I value that. I really value that so much. So today we had our first big event with Rainbow Alliance. Greg Baird came to speak. Everything went above and beyond what my expectations were. We had a crowd of more than 50 people. Greg's speech was well prepared. He made a lot of excellent points about Matthew Shepard, about the importance of education in schools now, about bullying and the effect that's had on schools and how we can improve schools by being more educational and more proactive. And I think Rainbow Alliance is headed to great big things, and I'm really excited for the future of this group. Today was a very great day for Kinkiki as uh, Greg spoke, and um, we got a good gathering and positive feedback, and he definitely spread awareness to a lot of local youth to this community college, and I think it was just great all around, and um, I'm looking forward to what the group is capable of and what I myself am, too, so I was definitely very happy about it. And, yeah, just because, like, I know rem remember I that it really does keep getting better. It really does. Uh, the speaker that we had today, Greg Baird, he uh, talked about a lot of various things, um, but they all tied in together to uh, make a really good message. Um, I've been in this area all my life. Obviously, I've been gay all my life, and I've had the pleasure of not ever really having to run into homophobic things or have homophobia thrown at me, but I think in my life I've changed a lot of people's minds once I came out and they see that we're not some weird creatures and I think Greg really touched on that, that we're normal people that live normal lives and we just live one part different from everybody else um, and that love is love and it doesn't matter. Um, so it was, uh, it was a really good speech. I, glad, I was really glad that I was able to come and I was glad that we got him here and hopefully this can be the start of more people coming in and doing speaking here to eventually go out into the community and not just here at the KCC. So. No matter also, what race you are, what religion you are, you're just a person and Greg and I totally lost my train of thought back there. Sorry guys. Um, but, you know, he he's entertaining, he's engaging, and I really like that. And just watching him speak reinforces the point that labels aren't important no matter what you are.